think so. Um, he is, uh, after I lost the election, I, I won the election, but when they said, what about Well, there you're hearing it in Donald Trump's own words in new audio that was just uh, released that Donald Trump said that he lost the election. He then had to cover it up but uh, and said, oh, I mean, uh, I actually won the thing. But you heard him say, I lost. And he was talking about how his relationship with Geraldo Rivera uh, deteriorated. And that was taken in an interview that he did with Ramin Sadude, who is a the co-editor-in-chief of Variety, who had previously given some interviews talking about Donald Trump's real serious cognitive problems. Um, Donald Trump's spokespeople then said, oh, this is all made up, this is fake news. Well, Ramin Sadude had the receipts. He has the audio recordings. He met with Donald Trump six times, and there are a lot of tapes in connection with this book that Ramin Sadude published about Donald Trump's continuing to fantasize about his days in The Apprentice and Donald Trump's like fake conversations in his mind with people who are like no longer alive. It's, it's so bizarre. Like take a listen to this uh, recording that was just released as well, where Donald Trump claimed that Joan Rivers voted for him. The one thing is Joan Rivers passed away in 2014, so she could not have voted for him. And unless Donald Trump believes he's speaking to dead people or uh, Donald Trump's conspiracies about dead people voting, and he's referring to Joan Rivers, here's what Donald Trump said. Play this clip. Joan said she was a Republican. Did you know that? I thought she might have been a Republican. Yeah. I know one thing. She voted for me according to what she said. Okay, well, there's just one minor problem with that. Joan Rivers died two years before the 2016 election, a little too early for early voting. Then as part of this interview, same interview, Donald Trump, while he's interviewing with this reporter, uh, claims that he needs to go upstairs because he has to address the Afghanistan situation. Is the, I have to deal with the Afghanistan right now. And again, this interview is taken when Donald Trump's no longer in office, right? This is after the election. These six interviews were 2021 and later. And Donald Trump saying that he needs to deal with Afghanistan. Here, play this clip. The reason I'm doing this and devoting a lot of time to it, I have to get back up because, you know, I'm doing the whole thing with the Afghanistan. Has he blown that Afghanistan? Donald Trump then makes this bizarre statement about Dennis Rodman, and he calls Dennis Rodman a cool cat because Dennis Rodman uh, dated Madonna. He said that's why he's a cool cat. And then Donald Trump goes on to talk about how uh, Dennis Rodman would be like a, a, a suitable envoy for him to North Korea. And just listen to what he has to say here. Play this clip. Dennis was a pretty cool cat in many ways, I'll tell you. Uh, hey, look, he dated Madonna when she was the number one person. Uh, you got to have something going, right? He yeah. also showed up, I think, to one of the summits you had with Kim Jong Un because he knew Kim very well. So, you remember so Kim Jong Un really liked him. Yeah. Legit. Yeah. And I said, you know, I can get these guys out of Harvard government and central casting they couldn't do anything with kim jong-un a guy like dennis could i didn't use dennis for it right but i thought about it a couple of times before i got to know kim jong-un but dennis would have done a better job than your traditional uh people your traditional ivy league people that always do that stuff and they have no personality though kim jong-un liked him you know he coached their basketball team right and uh, he did. I asked him about that. He said, I like Dennis. Last asked Kim during one of his Yeah, I asked him. He, he liked him. Uh, and by the way, Dennis liked him too. Let me play you the lengthier, the, the, the full clip, if you will, of Donald Trump with Ramin Sadude talking about Geraldo Rivera, just so you have it in its full context, where Donald Trump admits that he lost the 2020 election. Let me. Play this for you, play this clip. What was for all the like? He was good, he did a good job. Yeah. He was smart, uh, cunning. He did a good job. And are you guys still close or are you no know longer? No, I don't think so. Um, he is, uh, after I lost the election, I, I won the election, but when they said we won. 
He called me up three or four times. I didn't take his call because I was so busy fighting it, you know, with, with what went on. And we've caught him. I don't know if you see it, but you will. Um, but he called me up three or four times. Um, and finally, I had a little time. I called him back. And he went on Fox and he started talking about the president called me. I didn't call him. I returned his phone call. And he started talking very personally about how I was feeling, how I was doing, how. And I said, that's really a betrayal. I didn't talk about how I was feeling. I just, it was a, a phone call that lasted very quickly. Just, hey, how you doing, Geraldo? How's it going? It's not my deal. He's, he's, he's not my psychiatrist. Right. But he made it sound like it was such a big deal. It was a nothing. He, I, all I did was return his call. But he said, the president called me like I'm reaching out to him. Yeah. And I haven't spoken to him since. And here's what Ramin said uh, when he was on The Morning Joe, um, which Donald Trump's spokespeople denied and they called fake news and the usual stuff that Donald Trump's people do. But here's what Ramin had to say. Here, play this clip. The other thing that I think is really interesting because I really got to know Donald Trump post-presidency and I got to see what he was like. And over the weekend, he was talking about how Joe Biden needs to take a cognitive test. Joe Biden, you know, isn't all there. Donald Trump had severe memory issues. As the journalist who spent the most time with him, I have to say he couldn't remember things. He couldn't even remember me. We spent an hour together in 2021 in May. And then a few months later, I went back to the White House. To the, uh, I went back to Trump Tower to talk to him about his time in the White House. And he had, I said, he, you know, he had this vacant look on his face and I said, do you remember me? And he said, no, he had no recollection of our lengthy interview that we had. And he wasn't doing a lot of interviews at that time. So I think that the American public really needs to see this portrait of Donald Trump because this shows what he is like and who he is and who he has always been. And then Ramin went on CNN and also talked about Donald Trump's cognitive issues. Here's the thing though, Donald Trump's team can rant and rave and say fake news, fake news, but they're audio recordings. Here's what Ramin said when he went on CNN. Play this clip. Your biggest takeaways from sitting down with him, you know, right after he left the White House, when his political power is probably the lowest it's been since 2015, and how he reflected on when he was hosting The Apprentice. And, you know, the ratings were soaring in that first season and just kind of what that looked like for him. He was very deflated. He was conflicted. He was angry about the way in which the press had treated him. He still believed that he the, won the election. Um, and he was happiest when he talked to me about hosting The Apprentice. It was the thing that brought him the most joy. We watched clips of the show together. We watched the theme song and he really lit up. He watched firing the, his firing of Omarosa. And then he would talk about what he did at the White House and he would become gloomy and resentful and unhappy and refer to Afghanistan and Joe Biden. Um, but he also seemed to think that he still had some foreign policy powers. And there was one day where he told me he needed to go upstairs to deal with Afghanistan, even though he clearly didn't. He told you that he, while you were interviewing him at Trump Tower, he told you he needed to go upstairs to deal with Afghanistan? With the quote, the Afghanistan is how he referred to it. I mean, it's a remarkable experience. It's a remarkable book. Um, so Atel Today, Apprentice in Wonderland, Ramin Satuta, thank you for, for coming on and talking about what those six interviews must have been like. Thank you very much, Caitlin. Great to have you. You know, now one of the things that Fox is trying to do is like justify all of the really just deranged things Donald Trump says now that the public's paying attention to it. You've been paying attention to it for a long time because you watch the Midas Touch Network. But like on Fox, they're out there that's <laughs> basically saying, look, Donald Trump's basically, he's doing a comedy routine up there. So when Donald Trump is talking about his conversations with Hannibal Lecter, he's just working the crowd, folks. That is normal. That's what Fox is trying to say. Play this clip. People are talking about how Trump's losing it because Joe Biden's losing it too. Trump's kidding around. He's having fun. He's kicking it back, talking about Hannibal Lecter. He's looking in the audience. He's playing around. And now people are going, Trump is losing it. No, he's having fun. All right. and, and that's what he was picked up. One nation. But at the same time, even Fox has to admit, like Kelly, like Kaylee McEnany has to admit that there is a massive shift now of independents who are just repulsed by Donald Trump. And you know from watching the Midas Touch Network, we've been covering the exodus of independents and mainstream Republicans and mainstream conservatives 
away from Donald Trump. It's now registering the polls. I think it existed before. But we've been sharing tens of thousands of stories about that. Here, play this clip. Absolutely. This debate is huge. It's huge for President Trump because we see in our Fox poll, Biden leads among independents by nine. Worth mentioning as well that there is, uh, that Donald Trump also gave this interview with this podcast called All In. And again, it was very, very strange and very unhinged. Um, and in this, Donald Trump blamed Russia's unlawful invasion of Ukraine on NATO. Play this clip. So for 20 years, I heard that NATO, uh, if Ukraine goes into NATO, it's a real problem for Russia. I've heard that for a long time. And I think that's really why this war started. I'm not sure that this war would have started. Uh, by Donald Trump also praised Vladimir Putin as being a good negotiator for putting soldiers on the border of uh, Ukraine before unlawfully invading. Play the clip. Never happened. Russia was not going to attack Ukraine. As soon as I got out, they started to form along the lines. And I thought that Putin maybe will. He's a good negotiator. I thought he was going to be doing that for negotiation purposes. Then all of a sudden they attacked. And I said, what's going on here? And then again, you see how unwell he looks right here. He's talking about getting rid of the Paris Climate Agreement. Just take a watch at this for a second, take a look. So I got rid of the Paris Accord. I did a lot of things having to do with not only people, but tremendous amounts of money because the Paris Accord was so unfair. And I said, you know, when I do this, People are not going to like it, but I have to do it because it's right. People yeah, very, very odd behavior, but hat tip to Ramin Sadude for uh, that, that uh, uh, getting those recordings out there, though, and showing uh, the facts. We'll keep you posted as we learn more. I'm Ben Micellis from the Midas Touch Network. Hit subscribe. Let's get to three million together. Thanks for watching. Enough! Send it to the big house, not the White House. Get the new exclusive tees, mugs, and stickers right now at store.midastouch.com. That's store.midastouch.com.